Thank you. Thank you. And John, I got to tell you, it, it's a little bigger crowd than we first kicked off, but it is good to be back at Fox Valley Metal Tech. And you're right, it symbolizes all that's good about this state. Uh, we built this state more than 163 years ago on manufacturing. We're going to recover when it comes to manufacturing. We're proud to be here not only with you, but with your entire team. And let's give Fox Valley Metal Tech a big round of applause for hosting us here today. And that day, Tonette and Matt and Alex joined me. They're back here today. Our family is here together. Uh, I'm proud uh, of all the support they've given me and the love and encouragement, and I'm proud for what they mean not only to me but to the rest of the state of Wisconsin. Thanks so much for the family coming up as well. And I want to thank all of you coming, for coming out, but I particularly want to thank the members of the legislature and our lieutenant governor for joining with us here today. Uh, they've done a phenomenal job, not only those here, but others around the state who are out doing other activities today. Let's give them a big round of applause as well. And thanks to all of you for coming out on a, a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Uh, we won't keep you long because we're going to get back to hearing about how the Brewers are going to beat the Twins this afternoon uh, in the game like they did last night. But this is really all about you, all about you, the people of the state of Wisconsin. You know, over the last six months, families all across Wisconsin have given me a little bit of a glimpse into their lives as they've shared the stories of success and failure, hope and concern. I've toured manufacturing plants like this and plenty of others with small business owners who are encouraged about the future of the economy and how things are improving and hope to add more jobs soon. I've read to as kids not much uh, older than my two nieces and uh, saw the excitement that they have about learning. And I've talked to many cases. I've sat down and discussed with their teachers afterwards about their hopes and dreams for education in the state of Wisconsin and how they'd like to see that improve as well. But as your governor, I also got to say along the way, I've been, as much as I've been interested in successes, I'm also interested in hearing from the people of the state about their concerns and their worries. I've listened to families who are hurting and who are concerned about the future. I've hugged a woman who lost part of her house because of a tornado and found that she, in many ways, gave me more strength than I could ever dream to give her. I pray with the family who grieved at the loss of their son a young man who died a hero in Afghanistan, but for them was still just a child taken far too soon. And I've talked to moms and dads who've lost their jobs because of the economy and because of losing those jobs, they spend all their day looking for work and many times stay awake all night trying to figure out what they're going to do to support their families. All these moments, the public and the private, the ones that are good and bad and the ones that break your heart and at the same time the ones that warm your heart as well, all of those make up the fabric of Wisconsin. I've been inspired by the triumphs of our fellow citizens, moved by the links that moms and dads will go to help their child's dreams come true, and ultimately concerned about the challenges that keep our citizens awake at night. Now, the recent debates in Madison found us spending far too much of our time focused on our differences instead of our similarities. Well, today, we're going to turn that page. We're going to move this state forward. We may disagree on the issue of the day, but we must always find a way to unite and reach out when it means helping our neighbors in need or finding a way to make a better state for our children and our grandchildren than the one we inherited. A few weeks ago, I received a remarkable note from a guy named Tom in Oak Creek who said, I'm 55 years old. My, or excuse me, 56 years old. He said his wife was 55, so he appropriately pointed out he was a year older. Uh, but he said, we, we don't have any children but we worry about the kids every day of our future and what kind of a mess we're putting them in. I say to him and everybody else, our kids deserve a better future. and We must find a way to move our state forward, to work for the people of the state. Together, we're going to get Wisconsin back to the Wisconsin way. Our journey forward begins today by facing the financial reality surrounding the current state of our economy. 
We can all agree that emerging, we're, in many ways, we're emerging from the greatest depression or the greatest economic threats that we've had since the Great Depression. While we're beginning to show signs of recovery, the state's fiscal situation in the past has suffered from years of poor choices and faulty budget practices. Now, no one party is solely to blame. In many years in the past, Republicans and Democrats have taken their share of responsibility for the problems we face. Unfortunately for all of us, honest budgeting was one of those areas where both political parties tended to look the other way and allow things to continue on, from one-time raids on money to budgeting tricks and gimmicks. This restless budgeting was exposed by the failing national economy that caused troubled times in state government. It now requires us to make some tough choices. Fortunately, Wisconsin has a treasured history of being a leader in providing creative solutions. From the creation of the nation's first kindergarten to the passage of welfare reform, Wisconsin has shown a way to move the state forward. Addressing our significant state budget deficit is no different. And I want to thank the legislature, particularly leaders like Speaker, Scott, or Speaker Jeff Fitzgerald, Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald, and the leaders of the Joint Finance Committee, State Representative Robin Voss and State Senator Alberta Darling, for their courageous leadership throughout this budget. <laughs> Currently, more than 40 states across this country are facing huge deficits that threaten to, crit to cripple their states and ultimately pass the buck on to their children. While some states are proposing tax increases, massive layoffs, and the use of one-time money, Wisconsin is once again showing the way with real solutions. Our balanced budget makes tough choices while also providing a path to prosperity for our state and our people. Through honest budgeting, we're providing an alternative to the reckless tricks and gimmicks of the past. To move forward together, we're acknowledging that we have to make sacrifices to protect the next generation by decreasing the serious debt that they would otherwise inherit. No mother or father would ever pass the debt on that they've inherited. But that's exactly what our state government has been doing for years. When I came into office earlier this year, our state faced a hole of $3.6 billion. That's more than $642 for every man, woman, and child in the state. Think about that. For a family of four, that equates to more than $2,500. Let's put that in perspective. The average family in Wisconsin pays something like $600 per month in rent, or excuse me, $600 a month for child care. Here in Green Bay, an average rent is about $600 a month. So for each family share of the state deficit we inherited, that would be the equivalent of four months of child care, or here in Green Bay, four months worth of rent. While so many parents across the state are worrying about how they're going to pay uh, for the gas they need to get to work, or maybe how they're going to pay for the purchase of their son's or daughter's braces, our state government continued to live beyond the means by pushing off tough decisions that Wisconsin families have been making for years. The tough choices we made together to produce a responsible, stable budget will build a platform for future budgets, and more importantly, a stronger Wisconsin for years to come. Just as any parent would dread to leave their kids with that kind of debt, it is the dream of every mother and child to pass on to their children an even brighter future. That's exactly what this budget's doing. For the first time in a long time, we have a budget that is better for the people of the state than the one we inherited. For people like Jennifer from Watertown, this is what gives her hope. She sent me an email and said, you know, I do not want my children to bear the burden of our debt that the state has. It's not fair to them, and it needs to stop now. She was right. It is those concerns that we are striving to ease and those frustrations with government that I want to put to an end. That's what this budget is designed to do. Our budget priorities make the spending necessary to move our state forward by providing for critical services our citizens require today and investing in tools to grow our economy and create new jobs for tomorrow. We support critical services like Badger Care, medical assistance, and senior care. Over the next two years, nearly all of our new revenue, all the new revenue coming into the state of Wisconsin, nearly all of it will go to the Department of Health Services to ensure that families who rely on these programs 
will continue to receive the medical care they need. That includes cancer screening for low-income women through the state's Well Woman, well Woman Program, which is fully funded under this budget. In the last year, nearly 9,000 women benefited from these life-saving screenings. Because we made the tough choices, these critical services will continue. We also continue to support services like the state's transitional jobs program, which in the last year has resulted in jobs for more than 1,900 people. Under our budget, is it estimated an additional 4,300 Wisconsinites will receive jobs through this program in the coming year. When you look at our state spending as a whole, you'll see that our top priority remains public education. Public K-12 through schools are the largest expenditure in this budget. Now, my two sons go to a public school in Wauwatosa, so I know firsthand how important our schools and our teachers are to shaping the next generation of Wisconsin leaders. Interestingly, a school board member recently emailed me that our reforms, and I want to quote this, he said, quote, gave the district the tools to be able to continue to provide a high-quality education, to not lay off staff, and to save taxes, unquote. That was our goal. Our balanced budget takes the unprecedented steps to help reform and enhance education in our state. We give parents more choices and more opportunities when it comes to choice in charter schools. We provide the resources necessary so we can actually track student progress and make informed policy decisions based on good data. Furthermore, we'll be able to focus on other education reform measures to ensure that every kid, every kid in the state, no matter what zip code they're from, every kid gets access to a world-class education. We'll continue to work together across party lines on initiatives like my Read to Leave Task Force to make sure that every Wisconsin child learns to read by the time they leave elementary school. I'm also hopeful we'll be able to work together on other education reforms that will increase accountability and transparency in all of our schools by making sure that we see that these schools that need help and what kind of help that they need. We can empower parents to make the best educational decisions for our children. As our children learn and grow, we must also continue to grow our economy. Now, traveling across the state, I've been listening to citizens, and I know that we need to get our economy growing faster than it's growing today. Even as doubts linger at the national level about our recovery, we need to send a clear message that we're doing everything in our power to grow jobs here in the state of Wisconsin. That's why our balanced budget provides important incentives like the manufacturing tax credit and the capital gains tax credit to make sure that we're creating more jobs right here in the state of Wisconsin. As John mentioned, manufacturing has been a key part of our state's economy for generations. It provides good paying jobs for our families. As we compete globally to grow and retain manufacturing jobs, this credit will make sure our businesses here stay here and our people are employed right here in the state of Wisconsin. Under these changes, businesses and investors alike will be encouraged to grow their operations and increase their investments in Wisconsin-based businesses, resulting in significant job growth. Isn't that what we were elected to do? Put more people to work. These incentives provide hope to people all across the state, people who are doing everything within their power to get back on their feet again. People like those here in Green Bay, families in Green Bay like Tina's. Tina wrote me a couple weeks ago, and I think in many ways summed up so much of what's good about the people here in the state of Wisconsin. She really reminds us why there's reason to be optimistic about the future. Tina told me that she's part of a family of four, soon to be five. They make, if you can believe this or not, Tina's family manages on about $40,000 a year. They don't buy anything on credit. In fact, they saved up enough money to buy their homes so they could keep their payments low. She cuts coupons and she buys from secondhand stores. But she said to me, we, need, we have everything we need. We understand that balancing the budget is important. She went on and saying in her email, I am hopeful that your emphasis on job creation will continue as my college-educated husband, sole provider of our family, struggles to find a good-paying job. After losing his job over a year ago to economic downsizing, 
He went out and accepted the best job he could find. She then said to me, Wisconsin's improvements on the business-friendly list are outstanding and will hopefully encourage job growth that will soon benefit our family. Well, Tina, we need to bring more jobs to Wisconsin so we can help families like hers. When people question why we're working so hard to try and improve the business climate, I think about Tina and her family and the thousands of others like her all across this state. You see, unfortunately, Tina's story about her husband is one that's not uncommon. But working together, we can change that. We not only can change that, we must change that. Wisconsin's families have stood up and met the challenges of facing today's economy. And now it's time that not only their government, but your government stand up and do the same. We are doing that by respecting the taxpayers of this state, by not asking you to pay any more. That means we're protecting middle class property taxpayers. Middle class property taxes are the beneficiary of this budget. This budget includes a property tax freeze that will help thousands of Wisconsin families. The average Wisconsin family will save $700 because of our tax freeze. As my youngest son, Alex, would say, that's real money, right, Alex? <laughs> it makes me think about the 60-year-old custodian that wrote to me back in January who told me in, in his letter that he paid about $500 more in property taxes last year. He said, my property tax bill will be my, when I retire, my property tax bill will be the next highest bill to my health insurance. He said, I have to find a part-time job just to live normally because of those high property taxes. It's my hope that due to this budget, thousands of Wisconsinites, like that custodian, can breathe just a little bit easier and not worry about how they're going to stay in their home that they love. I hope that when he finally gets a chance to retire, he won't need a second job to pay his taxes because our freeze will help him and everybody else in the state afford to stay in the state of Wisconsin. Our balanced budget is important because it continues the work that we did starting out earlier this year. Working together as part of our special session, Democrats, Republicans, and at least one independent worked together to pass the most aggressive pro-jobs legislation in the nation. We signed into law major changes to improve our legal climate, to provide tax relief for small businesses, and to end the state tax and health savings accounts. Together, we increased tax credits available for expanding and relocating businesses in our state and created the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, a new public-private partnership focused solely on job creation right here in Wisconsin. Now, we've already made a positive difference, and we're starting to see our state turn around. During the first five months of this year, Wisconsin has added more than 26,000 new private sector jobs, and it's important to say right here, of those, more than 13,000 were in manufacturing. That's good news because our economy in Wisconsin depends on manufacturing. And our farming economy is starting to improve as well. In fact, agricultural exports are up about 30% since the start of the year. And tourism expenditures are up as well. But unfortunately, we're not out of the woods yet. The national recovery has been slower than we'd like, which is why it is so important that we here in Wisconsin lead the nation in implementing an agenda focused on job creation. Wisconsin will lead the way for the rest of the country on the road to recovery because our national renewal won't happen without robust job creation initiatives coming from the states. Now, some of you know, Tonette and I are blessed, as I mentioned before, to have two great sons, Matt and Alex. Matt will be in just a couple days, 17, and Alex will be 16 next month. The other night, I was out driving with Alex, who's just got his temps, and it's always fun to practice a little bit. They're both pretty good drivers. Uh, but I was out driving with him, and I just couldn't help but think about how time flies by. It just seems like yesterday that Tonette and I were walking our two sons down to Roosevelt Elementary School about a block and a half down from our home in Wauwatosa. It also reminded me about how incredibly important it is to have our priorities in order. As a state, 
We could choose to take the easy path and push the tough decisions off and pass the buck on to their generation and future generations. Or we can step up to the plate and make those tough decisions today. Our budget, your budget, the budget of the people of the state of Wisconsin chooses to face those challenges now so that our children and our grandchildren don't face the same difficult challenges we face today. I want my kids, Matt and Alex, and your kids and your grandkids and all the other kids of this state, I want our children to grow up in a Wisconsin even greater, even greater than the Wisconsin we grew up in. That's exactly what this budget sets out to do. Thank you all so much for coming out. Thank you for your support and love of the great state of Wisconsin. May God bless each and every one of you and particularly bless those men and women in uniform serving today. And my God continue to bless the great state of Wisconsin. Open the economy with pins here, too. For the kids who are wanting it's because I got to sign a lot of pins because a lot of these guys behind want one of them. That's why. <laughs> the nice thing is the weight's not taxing. It's less taxing. <laughs> Congratulations.